During this video we'll take you through how to get Node-RED um, up and running and you know fine-tune some of the settings. As you can see here I've, I've just tried to, to launch Node-RED and um, we don't have uh, a connection or the program's not running and that's because I haven't set it to auto run when I turn the power on and off on my Raspberry Pi. Um, it's relatively simple to do, but before we do that, we've got to make a note of some settings. So I've opened up my um, remote terminal, and if I type in here node red, when this starts up, um, there's something that you need to, to make a note of, and you can see it here on the screen, and this is where the, the settings file is located, because we're going to go into here and fine-tune some of the settings to make our life a little bit easier as we start so, you know, surfing the internet, for example, programs. Um, it will all make sense as we go along. But the first thing to do is to get Node-RED ready so it auto-starts. So to get um, Node-RED to auto-start, um, we, we have to enable it in the system control parameters. To do that, we're going to use this following command, and I'll, I'll um, put this in the uh, the chat. So you can su see there, sudo system control enable Node-RED service. Um, what we need to do then is reboot, and there's a common command to do that, and it's called reboot. Lo and behold, amazing. So we'll reboot our Raspberry Pi, so this is similar to turning the, the power on and off. So I may lose my connection briefly via the remote terminal. So when I've rebooted, Node-RED has automatically started in the background. Um, but under here you'll see there's, there's really no way to save my project. So it automatically saves it in its default settings and you can export the flows um, as a text file. If you want a project look and feel, you know, similar to your, your standard Microsoft where you can save flows and then arrange for them to be linked to Bitbucket, we need to enable some settings. And there's also some settings you'll see here. If I put this inject node on, I open this up. If I want to add a global parameter, that global parameter um, will be stored in volatile memory uh, is the easy way, easiest way to describe it. So when I turn the power off, um, I'd have to write a bit of code to push a default value if I got a specific start value I wanted in there because it's not being saved. And we're going to change the settings so you'll have an option here that says file. So it will store that value in file and retrieve that when it starts up. So it's a, it's a nice little feature. So let's have a look at how you do that um, now through the remote terminal. Now if you can remember I told you to make a note of where the settings file is um, and we manually started Node-RED to get that so you can see this on, on the right hand side. So here this is our, our root directory so if we type in ls that will list everything under the root directory. So it's a list. Um, anything in dark blue is a, is a file. So I can see here from you I need to go to home, pi.node-red. So I can change my directory. So cd stands for change directory. Leave a space. And then we want to go to home, forward slash pi, forward slash dot, node hyphen red. And that should change the directory for us. And if I type ls, then I can see my files under there. And there is my settings js. So to edit... Um, we need to use a text editor, and on the Raspberry Pi, we launch that by typing nano. Um, but uh, if you're using different Linux systems, this is using Debian, don't forget. So if you're using something else, you, you may have a different text editor. But for this, you, the standard Raspberry Pi image, we're using a nano text editor. I'll hit enter on this. If I've typed in the wrong name, I, I will get a, you know, a blank file. Linux, when it's in terminal mode, is very unforgiving with things that aren't quite typed correctly, even case sensitive. So be very careful. 
So here's my, my file. And the first thing we're, we're looking for is the security. So if we just scroll down to find security, sorry, I'm jumping from window. So if we just scroll down until we find security, I've already made a start on, on this. So all of this will be rendered out. So what do I mean by rendered out? It will have two dashes and it will look like this. So we're going to turn all of that off. Where it says password, um, there's a tool that we need to, to look at to generate the password because it's encrypted. So um, if we save that for now, so to, to, to come out of this program, we press Control X. If we want to save, we can say yes. Or if we don't, say no. So we haven't made any changes. Now, the tool for, for generating the password is um, contained within Node-RED if, if you're above version 1.1. .1. Well, we are. If you're not above version 1.1, um, I would recommend upgrading anyway. So let's run this um, command. So Node-RED admin hash password. So this is, this is the tool. So what you'll get is um, this prompt. So type in your password, be very careful doesn't show it on the screen and then it generates this code so we need to copy this code now the files back open we can scroll down to where it said password it can be a little bit fiddly at this stage don't forget if you're using control C control V you can see at the bottom here there's loads of commands so you can't use control C and control V you're gonna to have to get it copied from your your notepad and then right click it this here I've accidentally in, in deleted the inverted comma. So there we have it. So now if I control X, I want to save that. So type the Y and then just hit enter. Um, and to make that work, we need to type in sudo reboot. And we'll wait for that to reboot to see what happens on my landing page. I've rebooted my um, Raspberry Pi um, using the sudo reboot. You could have just turned the power on and off as well, but it's nice to be able to do everything remotely. So this is now where if I've accidentally typed in the, the password wrong using that hash tool that I won't be able to log in, but um, we'll see what happens. So there we have it. Um, we now have Node Red Auto starting, and we have a little bit of a password protection on there as well. Just gives you that little bit of peace of mind. So the next stage is to enable projects, and then to enable the context data to be stored into a file location. We're back into the the settings file. So the next um, two sections that we need to look at are our editor section, and then runtime settings. So let's have a look. I think I've done them in the right order. So you can see there's our new security settings. So here's the editor section. So under editor section, we're looking for projects. So this feature here needs to be set to true to enable projects. So let's, let's just delete that and type in true. And then you've got the option. This is just some text telling you here. So um, we're looking for this to be manually saved. Set the default projects workflow mode um, to auto, changes are automatically commit committed. Uh, I make more mistakes than getting things right, so I'd rather have the option to, to leave that at manual. So let's control X. Um, we want to save it and then enter. And again, get into the habit because it's a settings file. Let's do a reboot and then we'll go and have a look at how Node-RED looks. So now I've corrected my mistake, um, I, I've logged in, and I can see here my password settings are, are still good. And here we have the first um, new, new thing. So you can see here, clone repository. I'll do a separate um, video on that, how we can link that to Bitbucket or GitHub. Um, but we'll now create a project. Whee, and we can give it a username. And, and here now you can see we can start creating creating file names which is is quite nice so rather than it being flow we'll call it test again enable encryption if we want keep it nice and easy we'll create our project 
Okay, so there we have our projects. Now when we go to here, you'll see projects. I can do new, open, project settings, which will come on to in another video. So this is quite handy now, so you can um, start saving multiple projects if you're working on different projects. When we start syncing it to GitHub, you can start to see how different people can work on the same project and we can start creating branches, etc. So the last thing we need to do is, is set the uh, the context storage so you can store it either in file or memory. Now the the default string that's in the settings file can be easily edited so it pushes everything to file. So what do we mean by file? Well it sets a memory location called context on the node red and every 30 seconds it takes your data from context memory either flow node or global and pushes that to to a file but you may not want to do that with all of your data so you need to do a little bit of editing so you've got the option to either set memory or file so it's a configurable option so here under um, my settings if you search for context storage the the default option will all be rimmed out and it will say context storage default um, local file system that's fine so everything will be pushed to local file system um, but this gives you a little bit more flexibility so if you copy this setting here exactly and um, you can see it on the screen again be very careful on your your typing make sure it's exactly as it's shown with the commas and when you're ready press ctrl x um, I've already saved this and then um, run your node red so once you've made all the changes to the settings files just to, 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 to make sure it's working if you just pull in a change node and I'll go into these in more detail later double click it and then where it says message if you set that to flow or global it doesn't really matter and you'll see this new little icon appear on the right hand side where you can either push it to memory only or push it to, to file um, and then when you get this all configured you can actually start looking at your um, configured nodes and your context data and you will see the data being pushed here you can refresh it of course there's no program there at the moment so some some settings definitely worth doing it takes a little bit more time to get it up and running after doing the initial install of node red but uh, my advice is it's going to make your life a lot easier as you're going forward so there you go this video took a little bit longer if you like what you see please hit the uh, notification button and the like and um, thanks for listening and hope to see you again soon